Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Top 5 Friday. So every Friday we get together and we have a look at the Top 5 Something to Do with Blood Bowl. Now normally we put a post out on social media and we'll get your guys' impact before we uh, put together the final results. However, this week I've been playing and I had to put this list out because it just made a lot of sense. I've been looking, as you guys will know, at the dream teams at like optimal progression for players Plus, not to put any spoilers out there, but we are well deep into the Bonehead Championship recording now. And the more experience I get with developing players in Blood Bowl 2020, the happier I am with my outcomes. So what we're going to be looking at today is the top five passing skills. Now, this is specifically for skills you give your throwers. So this is not passing skills for anybody, and this is not skills for passers. This is, I've got a thrower, I can take a passing skill, what are the most impactful skills and that basically is going to be my top five so number five for me is the leader skill now hear me out okay there are a couple of skills that definitely fit in here okay sure hands is the obvious one for most throwers it's not a passing skill therefore it doesn't count the other skill is pass so I mean, we can assume that actually your thrower already has passed because most throwers do have passed. But let's say you're brewing up one. Uh, you've got a halfling hefty. Um, you've got a chameleon skink. OK, you've got a player that's looking at pass three plus and you're thinking, I want to make this guy my quarterback. How do I do it? They've got passing access and leader here is a skill that you should totally consider okay so when it comes to making the throw pass will give you a reroll for the pass action if you ever get the choice to take leader or pass and you don't have leader on your team already leader is a much better choice okay yes you can reroll every failed pass with the pass skill but realistically even if you are an absolute gun slinger you're only going to be making two to three passes a game with your thrower, with the dude who's got the skill. Any more than that, and you're having a hell of a game, let's be honest. So leader will give you one re-roll to do anything you like ever per half. So if you, say, make one pass per half, actually, if you have pass, that's great. You can re-roll both passes. If you have leader, you can re-roll both passes because it's one per half. But also, you can re-roll the pickup you can re-roll the bonehead for your ogre leader just has a much bigger impact on your team so don't think about leader as like just a team management skill but if you have got a passer and you're looking at your build that leader is pass it is sure hands but it's also catch and sure feet that one leader re-roll can make your long bomb massive opportunity as reliable as the pass skill but also makes your catch better if you just roll that natural six it makes your team better and is probably just the most impactful passing skill now it's not number one because obviously this is about making passes and leader is a very generic skill but leader is a skill that is better than pass it is better than sure hands because it can reroll absolutely anything at probably the same frequency as the pass skill number four i've got cannoneer so we've seen leader we've talked about the fact that you got pass maybe and we've talked about re-rolls now we're going to get to grips with the skills that make you better at throwing leader pass team re-rolls give you another chance to do it okay they're easy to come by whether you've got leader or pass it doesn't matter if you've got a team re-roll you've got the passing re-roll there's no way you can make that better so when you're looking at developing your throwing players those skills that allow you to actually just improve prove the die roll are going to be absolutely just the most important things that you can take so cannoneer coming in at number four so what cannoneer does is it gives you plus one to the pass for long and long bomb throws so that's straight up it you just get a plus one to your long passes now this fits at number four for me on the list is because even if you are an absolute monster of a thrower those passes are going to have a negative modifier to them so let's take an average thrower okay let's take passing three plus with pass that's awesome if you've got leader you can re-roll the catch you can re-roll the throw to get there whatever that doesn't matter let's think about the passing stat now okay so quick pass three plus short pass four plus long pass five plus 
and then long bomb six plus okay that's your default for basically good throwers now great throwers boost that up one more okay so it's two plus three plus four plus five plus and that's where this skill comes in is because it makes your average thrower who is passing three plus it means that you are three plus four plus four plus five plus and if you've got pass or you've got a re-roll that goes for as a massive jump up to a 75 percent success rate 75 percent completion to throw that ball what 10 squares nine squares 10 squares nine squares can't remember how many squares it is anyway longer than six but shorter than the longest band that is an absolute monster of a space however Blood Bowl is a game of risk management, massively so. So when it comes to that boost, it is a very cool skill and is going to take your... Uh, let's let's do it. It's going to take your Skaven thrower to 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus. You are now throwing a 3 plus long pass with a reroll. 3 plus plus. Okay, is that right? 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus. Yeah, that's absolutely monster. So now you're throwing those balls really deep. And you've got the reroll there from what we've just looked at, but also now that cannoneer just boosts up the chance. Now, recommending a 4 plus pass is always a risky thing to do, unless you're throwing bombs, in which case, you go 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 for it, because a scatter is great for you. Scattering the ball, not great for you when you're passing. But if you've got that reroll, and this cannoneer allows you to make a 75% chance to throw that long pass for the touchdown, those are pretty good odds in Blood Bowl land, so that's why cannoneer is my number four. Number three, it's Nerves of Steel. So Nerves of Steel is a very cool skill. It doesn't work for throw teammate anymore, which is sad. But basically, this player may ignore any modifiers for being marked when they attempt to perform a pass action, attempt to catch the ball, or attempt to interfere with a pass. So Nerves of Steel on your thrower means that you can get up close and personal. So if you think about it, you've got your pass, you've got your passing stat, but if you can move three squares closer, generally speaking, you get plus one to that pass. Now, what if the way is barred? What if they've tagged you? What if they've, sorry, marked you? Got to stop that. And you've got those negative modifiers. If you guys have played against Elven Union, you will know that Nerves of Steel just feels filthy because they're always catching on a two plus, right? That's just insane. If you have got a good thrower all right passing two plus if you've got an average thrower three plus okay so let's look at the nobility thrower here which i think we're all it's the all the underdog that we all love three plus plus for a quick pass somebody marks him it's therefore three plus plus for a quick pass that is absolutely huge but the other thing you can do here and this is i think going to be very important to your thrower's career Getting up close is something you should only do when it's crunch time, all right? So you've got a pocket passer, you're trying to avoid your thrower, who's by now potentially got leader or is just probably the, just the ball carrier of your team. You don't want him to be in too many tackle zones. You don't want him to be engaged very often because you've spent your skills buying them the ability to throw the ball, not ability to survive being punched in the face. So when it comes to nerves, this, is, this gives you potentially plus one plus two to your throw when it comes for time okay if you've got a catcher within the red zone within a single move away and they're in the open and you need to get the ball to them but to do it you have to put yourself in two base two tackle zones nerves is going to give you that flexibility now on that side it counts as movement basically all right you are going to be able to take it three squares closer into two tackle zones and then get plus one to your throw because you've gone from a short pass to a quick pass and you're ignoring those marking things. So you've gone from, you just boosted your chances. And that's why nerves is such a powerful ability. You can deploy wherever. Now, the downside here is if you're in nerves, it means someone's going to get a chance to deflect. But you're chucking an extra tackle zone on their ability to deflect. So that's going to be even better for you. There's always a chance for deflect. That's why passing is technically not a great idea. But Nerves is going to give you the ability to throw from wherever you want to go with no modifiers. And that's going to be massive. The other thing is that if you are, you've got a thrower and you want the thrower to receive the ball and it's in a tackle zone, if you need to get the ball deep, if you need to make that throw, you hand off to the thrower. He's in tackle zones. They've got Nerves of Steel. That's no modifiers. All right. That's three plus on a bad day. That's two plus with a good dude. 
that just means that you get free rolled so much equity. You don't have to pass with that lineman. Looking at you here, elf players, you don't have to pass with the elf lineman. You hand off to your nerves of steel thrower on a 2+, plus, and then he throws the ball on a 2+, plus for a quick pass to get you exactly where you want him to be. Nerves of steel is a tool to success, and that's why, for me, it's on this list. Number two, it's on the ball. So we talked about passing and we talked about the fact that you're probably only going to pass one, two or three times a game with your thrower. So why not make them three squares faster? OK, so as your thrower develops, it's going to get better at passing. All right. Some throwers are brilliant at passing already. OK, Skaven, Elf throwers, passing. <laughs> That's not fair. Sorry, Dark Elves. All the other Elves passing two plus plus. All right. With for the quick pass. On the ball is going to take you to movement 10 on your first turn. And this skill is for me so high is because it's also brilliant for those players that aren't good at throwing. For those throwers that are just coming along in their career. If you want to build a dwarf thrower, okay, they don't start with pass. So you could consider pass or you could just consider the fact that you've already got a reroll on your team. And you can give them on the ball because what that's going to do is that's going to allow your thrower to be the one who gets the ball. And that for me is why it's so important is because it makes them a better thrower because it gives them more opportunity to have the ball. And if you are going to have the ball, you want options. You don't need to throw it all the time just for the lols. But actually starting three squares closer is going to mean that your thrower who is tailored to throwing the ball is going to be closer to getting the ball and therefore is going to have the ball if your thrower has the ball it gives you more options they may not always be great options it may be three plus plus that's probably the best option you get that's better than having to run a dude round and go for a handoff when i have to take go for it or if i have to go for a four or five plus vanilla pass with alignment on the ball helps you massively when receiving it speeds up your offense by almost half a turn now when you think about the actual throwing process of this it will save you three squares of movement and three squares of movement is the difference between a quick pass and a short pass, a short pass and a long pass. And potentially, because I can't remember if it's 10 squares or nine squares, the difference between a long pass and a long bomb on the ball. If you can get it and you need to throw it, that three squares of movement is the same as plus one to throw at any range. I know that's massive hyperbole, but it is essentially in some circumstances OK, I move three squares back with this. I move another square, pick up the ball. I run my guy up six squares. And now I've got another lengthy situation. And the other thing here is you get free rolled and move every now and again. If your opponent goes for a pass action, your thrower gets to move. Now, your thrower is not going to be a combative player. OK, some of them might get block. If you've got on the ball, you're probably not playing the on the ball does not marry up with block brilliantly unless you're a dwarf okay that is a great combo and that's why this is so good if your opponent does pass in the backfield your thrower just gets to reposition and that is going to be massive to keep them alive but also just to help chuck an extra tackle zone in the right place it's an it's a really good and really sneaky bit of defense and if they go in for a desperation play as well it can put your thrower in the right position to grab that ball back and make the most of the rest of their passing skills. Number one, it's plus one to short passes and quick passes. It is accurate. And that's what we want our throwers to be. We want them to be accurate. Now, cannon is great fun. Leader is incredibly useful. OTB is going to make you faster. And the other skill, I believe, is quite good too. Oh, yeah, nerves is wicked. But accurate is just going to give you... It's the most win more skill, but most of your passing is going to be three to six squares. So most of your passing is going to be making the most of your integral passing ability. But accurate will boost you up to great no matter where you are, basically. If you're a dwarf, if you're a chameleon skink and you want to be better at throwing, accurate's going to make you a passing two plus player. Passing two plus is where it gets great. Now... But it also layers up brilliantly with those already great throwers because then it takes you to passing one plus for your quick pass. So Skaven, unsurprisingly on this list, OK, now you take accurate, you're passing one plus two plus. So you are throwing the ball 13 squares. You can move seven, you can hoon it six 
on a single two plus roll with a re-roll. That is a massive, that's that's an entire half of the pitch that you can cover square-wise with a single two plus roll. And because you've got that extra bonus of accurate tackle zone, one tackle zone means nothing, okay? If you've got nerves, it gets even better. And these skills are all going to combo up, but accurate, if you are looking to brew up a passer, you're looking to boost up a passer, it takes good passes and makes them great. And it takes great passes and makes them even better. Now, with all these skills, there are different angles. There are different things. And you know what they say, horses for courses. But if in doubt, chuck accurate on your passer. If you've got a hefty and you want to go for a quarterback roll, give him accurate. Passing two plus is fabulous. That's going to help you no matter what you're doing. Halfling is going to be difficult because obviously throwing costs you the throw teammate action, which is a terrible rule terrible rule get rid of that rule throw teammate throw pass throw bomb should all be allowed in one turn absolutely disgraceful boost up the stunty rising let's take away star players and let's give them the ability to throw teammate as many times as you want to turn i played that game because we got the rule wrong and it was awesome accurate doesn't work on throw teammate does blooming work on bombs though yes it does bomb things it's awesome actually the uh, fungus flingers make really good quarterbacks as well Accurate on these guys becomes, uh, what, uh, three plus quick pass. It's quite fun, and then you can start bombing things as well. But Accurate is going to take your basic thrower. No matter what you want to achieve, it is cheaper and quicker than saving up for a pass plus. You can then save up for a pass plus. That's absolutely fine. What's that going to be? Six, then another 18, then probably 20. All right, it's an effing long way. But you can do it, and Accurate just boosts it up. It's the easiest choice. It's the best choice. You want to be making quick and short passes before anything else it's going to brew up extra spp and it's going to help score a ton of touchdowns and there we have it those are my top five passing skills i'm probably going to go and delve into the other skills as well but i will put a shout out first but i've been looking at brewing up players and these are just some great options there's some other cool options as well running pass is going to be some good some good way of doing things and safe throw is going to be very useful for fumbling the ball there are some great options but these five i think help propel you as a player to be better at throwing quick and short is obviously the way to be there but cannoneer is going to help air it out if you've already got a great passer man skaven two plus three plus three plus four plus it just starts to be crazy but elven union with cannoneer that's where you want to be because catch nerves of steel and a four plus plus long bomb you can never stop them from scoring all right sure there's a 25 percent chance it's just going to go horribly wrong put diving catch on your dude you're absolutely there Anyway, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy throwing. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.